Hello everybody, how y'all been today? Today we're uh, going to be doing a Bible verse. For those of you who are new, we do a Bible verse at the beginning of every video. And we talk about it. And today's daily Bible verse is Colossians 3, 1. Okay, let's see. Uh, since, since then ye have been raised but with Christ, set your hearts on the right thing, where the Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that we need to set our hearts and our minds on God and what He wants us to do. Not on what we want to do, on what we think we should do, what He wants us to do. Because let me tell you something, a lot of times it can be like we want something but we're not supposed to have it, like drugs or alcohol or something like that. But, but God is saying uh, since, you know, God will reward us for the, for not doing, for not getting those things. He might reward us with, like, a, uh, like, we might feel better later on, or we might uh, be able to preach to somebody else who's struggling with what we were struggling with, and to, okay, let me read it from right here again. Let me read it again. Since ye have been raised by, Raised with Christ, set your hearts on Him above, Christ, where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God. Yeah, so uh, I just felt like reading that again. Yeah, so we need to set our sights on God and what He wants us to do, because it can be because e it can be easy to sell on what the flesh wants. By the flesh, I mean the things of this world. By the end of this world, I mean sin. And, and we need to work together to overcome some things sometimes. Sometimes we need to tell somebody, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me with this? Or, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you please pray for me? Or, Hey, I'm struggling with this. If you see me going to do this again, can you please stop me? Because... That's what we need. We need each other, and we need to be accountable for our actions. That's what I believe. We need to be accountable for our actions. And, uh, yeah. We need each other, though. Like the Bible says, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, that His will be done on earth and our own. Now, notice I said His will, not our own. And, you know, a lot of times we want things now, or we want them, we want things we can't have, we shouldn't, uh, have, or we want things, you know, of a sinful nature. That, that is of a sinful nature. And, uh, and to me, a sinful nature is something that is against God, and that's it, something that's against God. That's the sinful nature. And I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes I do get tempted myself, and sometimes I do question my faith. But I return to the fact that, you know, I had a miracle happen in my life, which let me get, let me talk about that miracle. Well, I have a few miracles, but let me talk about one of them. Whenever I was little, God told me he wanted me to be a pastor. Well, as the years went on, he said, uh, hold on. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, so, whenever I was little, God told me he wanted me to be a pastor. Well, as the years went on, that memory began to fade away. And I began to ask him, what does he want me to be? And a friend of mine told me that God told him that he wanted me to be a pastor. If that makes any sense. So, God works in mysterious ways, people. And we don't always understand it, but it happens for a reason. And, uh, listen, sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't like it, but we have to live with the fact that we can never have what, something that we ve we wanted. I, like, I might want a new computer one day, or a new camera, or a new phone, or, uh, a new movie. And I, and I shouldn't have that because I'm a Christian, and I'm not going to have that because it's not God's will for me to have that. Or it might be too expensive for me, which, might, which you know, it could be both God's will and too expensive. 
Well, now we got, now you guys will, that's what I meant. Now you guys will, it could be, now you guys will, it's too expensive. But listen, God loves you. Please don't ever forget that. Right now, some of you are thinking about hurting yourself or somebody else. Don't do that. God doesn't want that. God wants us to be there for one another through the hard times, through the good times and the bad times. Not just whenever we feel like it, but whenever we need it. He wants us to be there for each other. And listen, if you are having any thoughts of hurting yourself or somebody else, there is something called the National Suicide Prevention Hotline in the U.S. And I don't know the number to that, so you're, so you're going to have to Google that. And uh, there are probably other programs around the world, I would imagine, that can help with that. But that's something that you should take very seriously. Because if a person acts on that, do you want to be held responsible? For, like, let's say that you're a friend of somebody that acts on that, and you were there whenever they did it. Do you want to be held responsible for that? Do you want to live with the fact that you let your friend do that? No, you don't. At least, if you're, if you're really a friend of theirs, you don't. And some people might be worried about going to jail. Me, I'm not worried. I wouldn't be worried about going to jail. I'd be worried about the person I killed. Yeah. So, uh. And we need to be there for one another. We need each other badly. And. A lot of us aren't getting the help that we need right now. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had suicidal thoughts and I had a suicide attempt. And I don't know what the heck I was thinking. My anxiety was just too high. But I'm glad I had some people that I could turn to and tell that. that and I'm glad that, 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 I, that uh, I'm still alive today. Cause it was bad. My anxiety was so high. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. But now I'm okay. Now I'm fine. I'm not having them uh, thoughts. I'm okay. And uh, also, uh, please keep me in your prayers because of what I've been going through. And because of my Tourette's. For those of you who wonder what that is, I do random muscle movements like this or like uh, something else. And I might say something out loud that, uh, well, I might say something out loud to myself that I don't really mean. And it's, it's not, it's not that it's violent, it's just that it's uncontrollable. And listen. God loves you. He loves me too. That's why I'm still alive. Because he has amazing love. And I, I'm lucky that somebody caught me before I, before I committed suicide. And well, that's why he caught me. And, uh... You know, um, I'm just glad to be alive, to be myself, to be, I mean, I know that my life, I know that I've messed up before, and I prayed it, and we should always, uh, I believe once a day we should pray to God to ask him to forgive us from whatever sin we committed that day, and be honest about it, and try not to do it again. I notice I said try and I do because I know that we're going to mess up. But to me, if we try, I can see why God might forgive us. But if we keep on doing it and just not really trying, then why would God forgive us? I mean, why would he? Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Like, this will be done on earth now. That's what I'll say. And that's what the Bible says. And uh, please keep uh, 
all of the people who have, uh, please keep uh, people's mental health in your prayers because right now everything is just insane right now. I mean, we're having a global pandemic, we're having prices go up, we're having gas fluctuating the prices, we're having a global semiconductor shortage, we're having, which, uh, a semiconductor is an ele- it's part of a comp- it's part of computers. But anyway, I just wanted to tell y'all that to explain myself. We're having uh, famines, we're having threats of war. Well, well uh, let me rephrase that. We're having something that could become a war with Russia and with the U.S. And we're having all of these negative things happen to us. But listen, we need each other, especially now. Especially now. And I'm not going to lie to you, I have had dreams where I went back in the hospital. I don't know why, but hey. And it it is weird. Because whenever I was in the hospital, I prayed for dreams that, uh, you know, where I wasn't in the hospital because I couldn't. You know, I didn't want to, uh, to, I wanted to better myself. Yeah. But I also wanted, uh, uh, a part of me also wanted to be free from the hospital, so that's where the dreams come in, you know. But listen, and if you know somebody that's in a mental institution right now, Call them and tell them that you love them. Tell them that they're not going through this alone. Because listen, with the pandemic going around, the, um, we can't see each other like we used to. Like before the pandemic, uh, I know in the places where I went, they would let you uh, meet up with uh, your family. But now there are a lot of places that are still not letting you do that even if they've been vaccinated. And listen, please also keep the people who, please also, uh, you know, don't start a, a feud over, uh, you know, some people think that vaccines are like the mark of the beast or something like that. It's not. Vaccines are not the mark of the beast. But the mark of the beast is, well, uh, a lot of people think it's 666, but you might have to do something with that. But to me, the mark of the beast should be something that's against God. And the vaccines are none that's against God. Because why would, uh, hold on. She's had a little bit of water to drink. You know, why would, uh, You know, why would that be against God? I mean, it, it's it's not sinful. It's not causing you to sin. Now, some people think that are they. I heard uh, one uh, one pastor say that uh, well not well I don't know if he's a pastor, but he was saying that the mark of the beast, it, it is um. Uh, let me rephrase that. The uh, the vaccine is from unborn babies. I don't believe that. There's no evidence to support that theory. There's none. Plus, if you're a doctor, wouldn't you say something against that? I mean, I can understand, you know, some of them might be worried about losing their job, but I would not be worried about losing my job if that was going on. Also, please keep me in your prayers because I've been trying to do without playing video games because it can be violent and sometimes I get tempted to download an old game or to play or to download an old game or maybe play it on my PS2. Yes, I have a pl- yes, it is 2022 and I literally have a PlayStation 2. But listen, we need to come together as Christians, as fellow believers of God, as believers of Christ, 
and tell each other that we're not going through this alone. That none of us have to, not, none of us are going through this alone. And uh, if y'all want some, to hear some more inspirational videos, I do. Uh, let me see. Is it still, okay? I just want to make sure it's still recording. Okay, I do. Uh, I do. I'm on GodTube. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. I'm on. Um, I think those are it. And that's, now maybe this video could be shared on another side that I don't know about. But yeah. Also, please uh, share these videos and help spread the word of God. Because we need each other. And this, these videos are ways for us to share our emotions with each other. Are ways for us to share uh, our love for one for another. The ways for us to communicate with one another in some ways, I guess maybe not. I mean that that that's stretching it. I will admit that's stretching it. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Uh, what we're doing right now matters, people. We're changing lives. Whether it's for the good or bad, we're changing lives. I mean, one in the world can mean a huge difference in somebody else's life. And sometimes a simple question like, how have you been, can make a huge difference. It's because that shows that you are uh, at least interested in hearing how has that person been. Now, a lot of them will lie and say, oh, I've been doing good. You never know they haven't. Whenever they've been struggling, whenever they're going through hard times, I don't know why my eyes keep on closing like that. It's always my left eye. I don't know. But whenever we're going through hard times, we need to be there for one another. We, well, good times too. We need to be there for one another, because what one person calls the good times can be. It can not it could be awful to another person, and what we consider a little sin here and there, yeah, there's no such thing as a little sin. The Bible says, "For the wages of sin is death," so we all deserve to die and go to hell. That's literally what what that's literally what happens if we sin. But there is a way to be forgiven for our sins. You see, Jesus Christ went on a cross and died on a cross for our sins. And if we ask him, he, he might forgive us. But the question is, are we going to keep on making the same mistake over and over again and not even trying? Let me repeat that. Not even trying to better ourselves. Or are we going to try and maybe stumble and fall here and there, but we pick ourselves back up and we be like, God, can you please forgive me? Because to me, those are two completely different scenarios where we both need forgiveness. Yeah. I keep on looking at the clock right here. I need a, uh, I need like a timer up here. I have a phone, but it's not really the best timer. Maybe I can get a timer out there. I don't know. But uh, anyway, we need to be there for one another. The Bible says, uh, that you know, we need to be there for one another. Well, that the Bible doesn't say that, but that's what I believe. That's well, the Bible says, wherever two or more are gathered in His name, He will be there. Now, what does that mean? That means that whenever we are uh, worship Him. And we sing songs and praise him. And there's more than one of us. Then we'll feel his presence sometimes. Now, uh, you know, the Bible says, uh, for all have seen a fallen short of the glory of God. So, you, you pastor, you therapist, your friend. Your family member, you, you've all sinned. We've all sinned. Me, yes, me, I've sinned. 
Yes, I'm pointing my finger at me. I've seen it. I'll probably listen today. And I'll probably listen tomorrow too and the day after that. I'll probably sin every day. But but God knows that I love him. And if anything were to happen to me, I pray that my loved ones would be okay. And I know that they would still suffer because, you know, they're my loved ones. But uh, listen, we need to be there for one another. And listen, if you see somebody that's sinning constantly, you should be like, hey, can, how can I help you against this? Or what can I do to help you? Or maybe we can work through this together. I noticed that you're going through this or that. Or that. Maybe we can work through it together. Don't, because, uh, don't let them just be to their own devices and to do whatever the heck they want to do. No, we need to hold each other accountable for our sins and say, you know, that was very nice of you. Thank you. Sometimes, you know, somebody uh, is trying to stop us from sinning. Or I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Again, whenever somebody stops us from sinning. But we need to be there for one another. It's not something that, that we do like all the t that we have to do every single minute of every single day. But we need to be there for one another. Because we need each other. We need each other. Hope. Oh. Like the like that song goes, Holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty. And the reason why I said holy three times is to show that it's important. And we need to show and we need to show that standing against God is not good. I mean it might seem it might sound fun the first time or the second time, but then it might become an addiction. Then that addiction might become, lead us to depression. Then that depression might lead us to well, doing horrible things. Un ungodly things. Let me put it to you like that. Some things that nobody should be doing. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we need to be uh, there for each other. And we need to hold each other accountable. And we need each other. We do. We really do. We need each other. Whether that be through... Uh, through prayer, through uh, maybe something else. Like maybe somebody needs some money. But if somebody asks you for some money... And if you don't think they're responsible for it, buy them the stuff that they're asking you the money for. Because a lot of people will say, I need money for food whenever they go and buy the money, and they use that money for drugs, or alcohol, or marijuana. Now, I understand that, you know, sometimes we can't always, uh, you know, we, can, we don't always know where the money goes precisely. But we should, uh, but we, that goes back to this one. Being at the right hand of God, we need to, uh, with the money that we have right now, we need to do wise things with it and stop wasting it. We need to start in using it on things that will improve uh, other people's lives as well as our own sometimes. And by improve other people's lives, I don't mean getting them hooked on something. Or getting them hooked on some kind of medication or something. I mean something that will like bring them joy, like maybe a a Bible or a book about the Bible or a cross or uh, food. But uh, yeah, but with all those being said, uh, I hope that. Uh, God uses me, even me to uh 
to help people because it is hard. It can be challenging. It can be difficult. But, but you know, life isn't always about hard, challenging, and difficult. Sometimes it's about having fun, having a good time with friends, having a good time with family members, having a good time with whoever. The Bible says, uh, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, that His, well, the Bible doesn't say that, but the song does, that His will be done on earth now. Or I might say that, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I hope that y'all have been uh, having a good day today. And I can continue reaching people, whether that be through YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, uh, or whatever. And I hope that we can be there for each other as Christians. Because it's hard, it's hard going through a life, uh, you know, isolated and always by yourself and stuff. Plus, you can get depressed like that. You can get, uh, you know, things can get pretty bad for you. But like the Bible says, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, that like His will be done on earth, not at all. And, um, you know, a lot of times we're like, well, God can't help me with this out of the other. Yes, He can. It's just sometimes it takes time and, and you have to ask Him sometimes. Because a lot of times He wants to hear from us. Now, sometimes he'll be like, you know, such and such really helped out somebody and I'm going to bless them. Or sometimes he's going to be like, you know, sometimes he's going to do it just because he loves us and he's going to help us out. Because uh, to me, God is like a, is a father. And that's how he should be treated as a father. And will fathers let like their children... Uh, Completely stop their children? No. But fathers will be there to guide their children in the right direction. And sometimes fathers will intentionally let their child go down dark paths because that's what the child's chosen. Because the children are not robots. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, see y'all, uh, next time, guys. Bye. Hey guys, if y'all like this video and y'all want to share the word of God, y'all can like and subscribe and comment. And if y'all want to donate some money, we have a Patreon page. Now the Patreon stuff starts at $3 a month and it goes up to $25. And the reason why we do it monthly is because that gives us an idea of what we're going to be able to make like for the next month. Anyway, bye guys.